ISO 27001, Annex A 8.8, .8, the management of technical vulnerabilities. Okay, this particular guide, this particular video is gonna be a little bit detailed, right? It's gonna be a little bit detailed. And I'm gonna go through some steps that you're gonna to need to go through when it comes to the management of those vulnerabilities. At the highest level, it's gonna be about patch management, absolutely, but there are some of the considerations that you need. You're also gonna place heavy reliance on technical teams here. You're gonna have a heavy reliance on your technical teams and your IT teams to help you and support you through this. But let me go through that. I'm gonna start with the definition and then I'm gonna show you the considerations, the guidance and how you can implement it. Information about technical vulnerabilities of information systems in use should be obtained. The organization's exposure to such vulnerabilities should be evaluated and appropriate measures should be taken, right? So that's gonna be the guidance. When we're looking at this, let's think about two things, right? For the first thing we're gonna look at is if you produce software systems and your product is something technical, the first, the first part. If it isn't you, skip forward, use the chapters below and skip forward. Here I'm looking at you producing something through software development, uh, through hardware development, whatever it may be. For this, I am not gonna cover this in too much detail because you are a small proportion of the audience that I have, but what you will have is a release strategy, right? I'm not gonna teach you how to suck eggs, but what you need to involve and include in your process for the distribution of your products and the versioning of your products is vulnerability reporting. When people find vulnerabilities in your systems, how do they report them and how do they get them back to you? You're gonna look at vulnerability management of the things that you're producing. So what you do when somebody tells you that they found something. You're gonna look at vulnerability communication, what and how you tell people that there is a vulnerability in your stuff, right? How do you do that and what's the timing around that? And you're gonna look at vulnerability roles and responsibilities. So this is already gonna be baked in. You're already gonna be doing it. So sense check that you are doing it. But vulnerability management includes the things that go to your customers, right? So vulnerability management of your stuff in the wild, in the open world, and how you manage that and they get that back into you and what you do about that. What I'm now gonna move on to is vulnerability, or vulnerability management of things that you own and you control, things within your environment, right? The management, the day-to-day, -day, the operation, the things that are in scope for 27,001. The first step is we need to know what technology, we need to know what we've got. It sounds very, very simple, right? It sounds very, very simple. This is about asset management. We've covered this. I'm not gonna list them out. In the blog that goes with this, you can see the link to the additional controls that go around this, but this is about asset management, understanding what you've got. We cannot control what we do not know. We need to know what we have in our environment, what assets we've got, what hardware we've got, what software we've got. We're gonna be looking at things like acceptable use of information, return of assets, classification, labeling, and information transfer. So we really need to understand what it is that we've got and how our environment operates so that we can understand what the vulnerabilities are. There are some steps that we're gonna go through, right? Some steps, so again, I said it's gonna be a little bit detailed than it is, sadly, uh, but it's gonna add you value, right? Because you're gonna be asking me, how do I do it? First thing, configure your assets properly before use. Before use, configure those assets before use. Solid technical vulnerability management is part of the standard and it links to this control by removing services that are not needed. Services that come built in, get rid of them when you don't need it. Blocking those not needed that cannot be removed and having solid configuration and technical management practices in place. What this is gonna look like when an auditor looks at you is what are your standard build documents, right? I cannot give you templates for that because I don't know what your standard build is, but I can tell you that your standard build will remove ports, services, technology that it does not need. It will change the user password, the admin password on first uh, installation before use. All of these things are gonna be in there before use. Configure that asset and ensure a standardized approach to asset configuration and that you can evidence that. We're gonna need to know what our vulnerabilities are. It's that they said, you know, understand, obtain information. How do we know what vulnerabilities we've got? There are a couple of steps that we can go through, a couple of things that we can look at. When you implement your vulnerability management process, we have to look at the identification of vulnerabilities. There are varying depths and varying degrees that each of these approaches will go through, but let's have a look at some common ones, right? The common ones, the first one is gonna be vendor alerts, right? The vendor actually alerting you through newsletter, through bulletin, through phoning you up, uh, through issuing your patches, whatever it may be. Vendors as a rule continually re release patches. They're continually updating their systems against known threats. 
against weaknesses, right? They're going to be communicating with you on a regular basis. They'll alert you in the technology itself sometimes, right? Even the technology itself will alert you uh, to either a vulnerability or a patch or an enhancement that needs. It's a quick win. It's a simple win. Vendor alerts is one that you want to implement in terms of this particular control. There may be specialist forums. You may be part of specialist technological groups, technological forums. We looked at this when we looked at uh, contact with special interest groups, one of the earlier clauses and controls, and you can go back to that. But here we're saying, are, are there any security forums that I'm in? Vendor forums, okay, an extension of the vendor uh, identification control. But is there anywhere where I'm getting my information off of the internet, off of groups of like-minded peers or technical peers or strong, uh, strong personalities and people in this arena that can help me to understand either before um, a vulnerability becomes real or as it becomes real and as close to real time as possible. Speciality forums are a great source, right? Here what we're looking at really is a segue into 5.7 threat intelligence, right? If you've got threat intelligence and you're identifying your threats, you've got your threat intelligence sources which will lead to this, you've tied these together, you've got your special interest groups from the previous control, then you're going to be doing this, right? We're going to be relying on that. We can look at things like penetration testing, internal, external, and all the variations and flavors and varieties of penetration testing. Pretty old school way of identifying vulnerabilities, right? Most of your customers will require you to do at least an annual pen test, which comes with its own risks and down, downsides, right? Because it's an annual point in time uh, view of your systems, but it's better than nothing. So looking at things like doing a penetration test with a qualified, experienced third party who can help you to identify those vulnerabilities. And it may be that you then look at implementation of vulnerability scanners, vulnerability technologies that are regularly checking your environment for vulnerabilities, right? The industry is moving a lot away a little bit from point in time pen test to ongoing vulnerability scans and vulnerability management. So working with your IT team, what are the vulnerability scanners and technologies that we might want to deploy to mitigate the risks that we've got? So once we've got that, all of that information in, we understand what they are, we've got to assess those vulnerabilities, right? We're looking at vulnerability assessment. Your process should be that you assess vulnerabilities. You're not going to necessarily respond to everyone because everyone isn't going to be appropriate. And the way in which you respond, which may be through continual improvement, incident management, uh, is going to be based on priority, right? Prioritization, assessment of what that vulnerability is. The way that we do that is by doing a mini risk assessment. We understand what the risk of the vulnerability is. We look at what the control is to mitigate that risk. And then we plan the implementation of that risk control. It can be the case that you accept the risk. But again, that is going to be proportionate to the priority and the urgency of that risk. Uh, sorry, of that vulnerability, right? So the output of this should be a risk score, a prioritization and a risk decision, what you are going to do about that vulnerability. The final step in terms of this part of the process is to address the vulnerability. So you've made the decision of what you're going to do. You're going to have to go and do it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at, again, the processes that we put in place, the controls that we put in place, right? Change management. The implementation and following of change management, look at that control, how we manage a change. We're going to be looking at things like continual improvement, our continual improvement process, our link to our risk assessment process, our reporting and how we report that out and our management oversight and our management review team and how we do that. So we're bringing together a simple phrase, address the vulnerability, but address the vulnerability using the controls that we've already covered and that are already in place for good, solid information security management. If I was to give you a high level, right, we're going to run through these. You're going to check out the blog for more detail. High level, how to pass the audit. Have, an effect, have effective asset management. Know what assets you've got. Configure your assets before use. Have steps in place to identify vulnerabilities. Risk assess, prioritize found vulnerabilities. Action risk acceptance or vulnerability mitigation management to address them. Implement controls proportionate to the risk posed. Keep records, keep records of everything and test the controls that you have to make sure that they're working. Two of the biggest mistakes that we see is number one is pen testing, penetration testing. It is not in and of itself right, a, a mistake, right? It is the bare minimum that you should do. The reason I put it in under mistakes is it's a point in time. 
you will have had to have done one at least within the last 12 months. So if you haven't, then it's a double fail, right? I mean, it's a double issue for you. If you have done one in the last 12 months, then you need to understand the limitations of what that is telling you and when it was telling you it, right? Whether or not you've purchased a penetration test that does a backup test once you've implemented your remediations and can prove that you mitigated those vulnerabilities or not. Okay, so there's a lot more to this. Uh, rather than just, oh, we did a penetration test, there's the report. What did you do about it? How did you manage that? How frequently are you doing it? And again, all proportionate and based on risk. And another mistake that we see is not applying patches, right? Not applying patches. Systems that have got patches that are way, 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 way back. You know, having things like automated patching in place makes sense, but you've got to do what's right for you. You've got to look at patch management and the control that we looked at. But a big mistake is just patches aren't applied. And the minute you've got you no know, patches applied that are critical, right? Your systems are at risk. You're going to be failing this particular control. So make sure that your patching is up to date. Make sure that your patch management process is on point. So that was ISO 27001 Annex A 8.8 .8, Management of Technical Vulnerabilities. You've got a heavy reliance here on technical teams, right? The mitigation of that, how you're going to manage the, uh, the change process about getting those out and rolling those out, how you're going to check that that uh, change was applied successfully. Did it mitigate the risk and all of that that goes into that. Hopefully not too deep a dive for you, not too boring for you. Check out the blog because it's easier to follow, it's more sequential. Check out the blog that goes with this that has more detail in it. But for now, my name is Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja. We are continuing through the Annex A8 technical controls. And so until the next tutorial, peace out.